Hey, what's going on, everyone? So, uh, what I have here for you today is episode three of When the Hunt Calls. Now, um, in this episode, I got the chance to chop it up with the brother Adam Bryant the Third, aka AB3. Now, AB3 is the creator and host of the Bryant Land Country podcast, um, and it is an awesome podcast. Um, he covers a lot of topics, but it is predominantly hunting related. Really great dude, really great conversationalist. Um, and if you don't follow him on Instagram, check him out at official Bryant Land. And um, again, his podcast is the Bryant Land Country Podcast. Um, interesting note, uh, AB3 was actually one of the first people that when I got onto Instagram, I had reached out to and started picking his brain and um, you know asking questions and things like that. He is actually also the first person to invite me on to a podcast so i got the opportunity to be a guest on this podcast get interviewed and initially tell my story uh everything i'm basically trying to do all right so here it is episode three when the hunt calls with adam ab3 brian the third all right hope you guys enjoy it yo what's going on brother? <laughs> what's going on man chilling man chilling Everything good? Yeah, man, can't complain. Just just got off, uh, you know, podcast. Uh, not podcast. Instagram live with um, with uh, Pat Durkins there. Okay. So uh, and now it is you and I, you and I. All right. How are you doing, man? Man, I'm good. Been fighting a little headache for most of the day, but uh, I'm good. You know, I got a recording in earlier. Um, for an upcoming podcast, and then just um, doing some stuff around the house, getting ready to go down to the property tomorrow. All right, no doubt, no doubt. You you mind tilting your, your phone up just a little bit? Yeah. How about right, that? Right. Oh, that's perfect, brother. That's perfect. I see, you know, your beautiful face there, your handsome face and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I appreciate you coming on. I know you know you're not. You just say you're not feeling well, so I really appreciate you taking the time. So yeah, no, real quick. Uh, Without without further ado, let me go ahead and kick this off. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for sticking around for this double header of uh, When the Hunt Calls. Um, this is the second, I'm sorry, the third episode of When the Hunt Calls. Second one for the day, though, for the night. Um, and my guest is none other than AB3. Adam Bryant the third, if I'm if correct me if I'm wrong. Yep. Um right. the cr the creator and host of the Bryantland Country podcast. Now, having you on, I gotta start and say, is um is very uh special to me because you were the first dude that kind of uh reached out two things. You were one of the first dudes whose brains I kinda start picking I kind of started picking at uh with asking hunting questions. Um, I, and I apologize if in the beginning I had been real annoying, but I really appreciate the support. Yeah. And then two, I've had, I've been blessed with the opportunity to kind of tell my story on a couple of other podcasts, but yours, you were the very first person to have me on your podcast. So I really appreciate that. So ladies and gentlemen, AB3, go ahead and, um, you know, tell them about your podcast. What exactly is, uh, the Bryant Lang country podcast? So, yeah, I mean, it's a podcast that I started. First of all, I mean, I'm glad to be here with you. I mean, you've just kind of, like, blossomed and everything, man. Like, you know, when we first started going back and forth, you know, like you said, you was asking questions and whatnot. And then now you did one Instagram series. Now you got your own Instagram series, man. It's just like you're just taking it off, man. So it's good to see you out here doing that. But... Um, as for my podcast, it's just real, you know, down to earth, just talking to people, sharing the stories, trying to get like different voices so it can be, uh, more diverse because like when I started the brand Bryant land, I mean, when I started it, I didn't have a clear focus of what I wanted it to be, but it quickly took shape because it's like, you try one thing, it's like, nah, that ain't working. You try something else, like, mm, that ain't quite working. And then probably about a year or so into it, I finally hit a stride. 
and it's like, okay, this is what I wanted to be about. This is what I wanted to do. So when I first started, I was doing videos and mm -hmm. shooting videos, telling, you know, interviews and telling people story and stuff. And when you're kind of doing that on your own and doing it out of your own pocket, it gets expensive quick. Um, wow, okay. So the podcast, and I had just started like dabbling in the podcast, maybe like towards the middle of last year. Um, I'm slow to think. Like, I like technology, but I'm slow to get up on stuff. So, <laughs> like, you know, when I finally got up on podcasts, like I said, it was probably about, like, last year. And then I was just like, you know what? That would be a great avenue for me to reach out to people and be able to talk to people. I don't have to worry about, you know, trying to travel and coordinate, setting up interviews and then editing and all that kind of stuff. I can just talk to people, you know, either via Skype or via phone, record the interview, get to ask some questions, just have a plain conversation. So that's that's kind of how the genesis of the podcast got started. Nice, nice. But um, now, um, you know, hunting in the podcast isn't exactly like your main gig. Um, let everybody know what your actual main job is like, because you're, you're ridiculously like tech savvy. And when you do the podcast, you sound like somebody who's used to being on the mic regularly or in front of a camera on a regular basis. You know what I'm saying? So what's, what's your, what's your kind of history, you know, with that? Which is bananas that you say that because I don't feel comfortable I should say I don't feel comfortable. It's taken me a while to get comfortable. My background is directing. I direct live TV sports. I still do it. That's my primary job. So anytime you're watching a game like on ESPN or like Fox Sports or Fox Regional, any of the Fox Regionals and stuff, that's what I do. I direct live uh, television sports. Um, which basically when you're director, you tell everybody, you know, you tell the cameras what to shoot, you're telling them, um, you know, the technical director when to take the cameras, in certain graphics, all that stuff. You basically, along with the producers in charge of the podcast, or in charge of the telecast. So, mm -hmm. and I've been doing that, God, television probably over 22 years. Um, yeah, about 22, 23 years in television, and then directing close a little over 20 mm -hmm. um so that's my background so i come you know with a television and media background and just being like around a lot of talent um as far as like host and stuff like that and seeing how to interview people and things like that it's kind of like how i was able to jump into the podcast it's like you listen to enough people you see enough people and how they do it then it's just like, all right, you kind of pick up what to do, and then you also kind of pick up what not to do. But I'm still, you know, trying to perfect it. Like, I struggle with a lot of the quote-unquote formal things that you're not supposed to do. I say, um, to a lot when I'm recording. I, you know, I got, like, little ticks that I picked up that I do. But, you know, I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, and I've always been a person that don't really sweat the small stuff, so... Nah, I, I know a lot of times we can be we can be our own greatest critics. You know, we tend to oh, no dwell, yeah, we tend to dwell within our <laughs> own minds. And then you, because I'll be honest, I did my first episode of this, um, you know, when the hunt calls last week, and then I posted it on YouTube. I've probably watched it like three or four more times since I like posted on YouTube, trying to figure out you know what I could do, what I could do better, and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, I gotta say though being on your podcast and listening to your podcast one of the dopest things dude that you do is that whoever it is like i get the feeling that whoever you're speaking to um like you've known them for ages like you're it's just a buddy that you're sitting down with and 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 chopping it up you know what i'm saying um is that something like you were looking to do or is that just a, a core piece of your personality like how do you do that it's <laughs> it's so funny um i am an introvert i mean like a supreme introvert like i can't, but I, I can't believe that and i know it's gonna sound crazy when i say this but it's like genuinely like i like to be to myself and you know, it's just like I don't flock to people or flock to be around people. Like, I just enjoy being to myself. But one of the things that I have found is that if you get me on a subject or you get me on something that I either know a little bit about or at least just like talking about, mm -hmm. I can just pick up and go. 
And I mean, uh, you know, we all have gifts in this world. And being, you know, a host of a podcast, I would have never thought would be like a gift. You know, I always thought my gift was like directing and, you know, seeing, you know, like the big picture of a telecast or something like that. But yeah, man, it's just, you know, when you get me on a subject, like I said, that I love talking about, mm-hmm. is it kind of flows. And I wanted that to be the whole flow of the podcast. Like I didn't want a formal, like, you know, question A, answer A, question B, answer B. Like, let's just talk. And some of my best cop, my best podcasts, in my opinion, are the ones where it's just like we having a conversation. Just like when me and you recorded. Like, I think I had maybe like five or six questions, like written down. Mm-hmm. And it was just almost like bullet points. Like, I had five or six questions. And you know, once we got into the conversation, it just became, you know, we just having a conversation. Like, yeah, I asked the question, but then when I asked the question, you start talking and answering it. It's like, oh, yeah, I remember when I did blase, 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 and the conversation just flowed. Mm. See, that, that, that's, I guess that's the thing, and I'm hoping to, to kind of emulate that as, as this, you know, as this show kind of progresses. Um, now, one of the things I definitely want to also give you props on is the diversity of your guests, man. It's all right. So coming into this, you know, once I, I fully realized I wanted to hunt because originally I, I was just I picked up a, a bow and I was just talk, thinking about, you know, archery. I just want to get out to the range. You know, I used to look on Instagram and and just see people at the range and stuff like that. Then in my feed started popping up, you know, people hunting and um and then I realized, you know what? I felt a calling and realized hunting was something I wanted to do. Now, what I saw was the lack of, you know, people of color um, in the hunting community. Like, I, did, I, I had come to the conclusion, like I said many, many times before, was that I thought that it was one of two things. Either that, you know, black people didn't hunt or they did and just didn't share it on social media. You happen to be, I don't know, I really don't know how, but you happen to be one of the people that popped up in my feed, and I was just like, all mm-hmm. right, I'm going to hit this brother up, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And and you've been really forthcoming with information um, and real supportive. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to put this out here, put this out there, and I'm going to let people know exactly how supportive you've been. <laughs> um, all right. So, so, ladies and gentlemen who are watching right now, Mr. AB3 has been supportive to the point that after the podcast, after I was a guest on his podcast, he asked me what I was willing to do or what was I was looking to do on YouTube because I was having difficulty coming up with content for YouTube. This brother wrapped up and shipped to me a GoPro. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've yet to figure out how I'm going to work with this and, and, and use it. <laughs> but it's sitting there, and I've been reading the manual, getting familiar with it. Yo, that's un- unprecedented for me. You know what I'm saying? For a dude on social media to, to you know, kind of vibe with me and like my energy to go so far as to like, hey, I got this sitting here. I'm not using it. I like what you're doing. Take this and do something with it. You know what I'm saying? Dude, that, like, that's how supportive, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Mr. Adam Bryant is like <laughs> that's what you did, and that 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 meant a lot, my dude. That meant a lot. You Man, know what I'm saying? So, I I I appreciate it. Um, it was one of those things. Like I said, wasn't looking, you know, to get any kind of like credit or you know whatever. But I know it was sitting around in my apartment, and it was one of the first GoPros that I had bought, and I hadn't been using it, and it was just sitting there, sitting there. And I had like a whole bunch of other stuff because I I've ran through GoPros. I've destroyed <laughs> GoPros just really? trying to figure out new ways of shooting stuff and where I can put them and what I can do with them. And if you don't protect them, <laughs> no, they're a lot. The ones out now are built a lot better than the first generation of them. But yeah, that was like a first generation GoPro. And mm-hmm. I had shot stuff with Matter of fact, I took that GoPro to Louisiana Texas with on ATV rides and all kinds of stuff and it was just sitting there and you know I saw your stuff like you said and you were you know doing your videos and whatnot and I was like well here shit, I ain't using it so you know give it to somebody else and and let them use it so that I mean you like I said you were welcome it wasn't 
you know, looking for any kind of credit or anything like that. It was just literally like, it's sitting here and here you go. Cause I know me, like if I got cameras and get multiple cameras, you know, I try to find ways to use them, but that's the direct in me. So nah, you're, again, you're, you're more than welcome. No, nah, I really appreciate that. And but, I mean, but just, just that energy that just like paying it forward, kind of like that's that I'm hoping to kind of emulate that as well. And, and, you know, put other people on if, if, if I get to a point that I'm, I'm that, I don't want to say successful because you know what I'm saying? Everybody's got a different definition for it. But if I get to that point that I can help somebody else out like that, trust me, kind of uh, off of the energy that you put out there, I, I plan on doing the same. Um, yeah. I'm, it's, I mean, you know, I tell anybody, like, I don't know everything. I don't pretend to know everything. Um, especially when it comes to hunting. Like I said, I've only been doing this like five years. And it was one of those things that I didn't grow up around. Like it wasn't something that was passed down. It was I had finally got some success in my career mm-hmm. and I had the ability to do things that I hadn't been able to do to do before. Like my biggest thing was just buying an ATV. When I bought my first ATV, that was like the world to me. It was like, okay. And then after like about a couple of years, I was riding, you know, ATVs and stuff. And I was just like, huh, this is shooting a bow. This looks fun. This looks interesting. And then I picked up a bow and I started shooting bows and stuff. And then I went, you know, hunting and just kind of got sucked up into it. And then probably about a year, about two years after that, I was like, dang, duck hunting look fun. Yeah. I'm going to start duck hunting. So I started like looking at videos and went on couple of duck hunts and then just been like shooting like geese and stuff for the last couple of years i mean so it just kind of snowballed but it, it was just like i was looking for another outlet or uh, looking for something extracurricular to do because i had kind of got bored with video games i was never <laughs> like into golf like do you really like for real like when they stopped making the ncaa game like the ncaa football that was kind of when like my whole video game because like, i've never been a big call of duty uh all this you know other games that you play online again i'm an introvert social i, I don't want to be social <laughs> like, i just kind of want to do my thing <laughs> and that and i guess it's kind of contradictory in hunting because hunting is all about you know like making friendships and making you know memories and stuff and it's kind of forced me to get you know out of my comfort zone a little bit you know, mm-hmm. just meeting and talking to other people, which, you know, I've enjoyed it. But, yeah, like, once that kind of, like, ran its course, that's how I kind of gravitated towards this. And here we are. No doubt, no doubt. So, you know what? Let's jump right into the meat and potatoes kind of it because you were t- talking about hunting. Yo, share with everybody what your first hunt was. Like, was it a bow hunt or was it – um? Or did you use a firearm or like, you know, you, you tell the story, your very first hunt, what was it? Yeah. So it was, it was a bow hunt. And matter of fact, I tell the story on my um, podcast. I got a podcast called my first hunt. Make sure you check that out. Unshameless plug. Um, (laughs) But it was in October um, 15. Yeah. October 15. I had bought my bow father's day, June 15. And just been practicing, practicing. And I found the outfitter that, you know, run um, hogs with dogs. So I was like, okay. Because in my mind, like, deer, and this just goes to show when you're talking about something that you have no idea. Like, in my mind, it's just like, okay, you know, I got this bow. Hopefully, I'll be good enough to kill a deer one day. And it was like, well, I'll try something, you know, easy. At first, I start off on hogs. <laughs> Knowing what I know now is, you know, <laughs> God, dude, you were naive as hell. But so, you know, I found an outfitter in South Georgia, and they run hogs with dogs. Again, naive as hell. I was like, okay. So, like, I got a bow, and he was like, all right, that's cool. The funny thing about that is every outfitter I've ever talked to after that absolutely refuses to take bow hunters. Um, really? Because, yeah, well, because when you're running with dogs, obviously you run the risk of shooting the dog. And that was the only thing I could think about when I was on that hunt. It's just like, man, please do not let me hit this man's dogs. And it was, <laughs> I think it was like two or three of them that he had, and they were hounds. 
um, as opposed to catch pitch. So that makes it a little bit easy and a little bit hard because catch pits, once they lock on, once they get the hose by the ear, they lock on, they don't let go. And traditionally, you either go in with like a knife or a spear and get right behind the shoulder, stab them, and then it's a done deal. With the uh, hounds, they kind of circle them, they bay them, and basically distract them. So the hog is like focused on the dogs that's yapping and nipping at it or whatever, and then hopefully there's a clear enough space where you can get in and get the shot. So I went in. Um, like I said, we went after these hogs, uh, after this one, and the dogs was yapping and everything, and we got to the point. He called the shot, and when he called it, I put the arrow straight through um, his neck. And like I said, I'm thinking that I got, you know, a good shot, like right behind the shoulder and stuff with all the adrenaline and everything that was going on. <laughs> I looked at it later, and it was a pass through, straight through his neck. And that was wow. how I got my first haul. And then – um and that was with my son. My son was with me, so that was what really, really made it cool. Like, we got up at, like, 4.30 in the morning and drove down um, South Georgia outside of Macon. And that was, you know, what made it even better because um, he was with me. And um, so, yeah, that was my first hunt. It was a bow hunt, uh, like I said, with hogs. And then probably shortly after that is when I took the job in Wisconsin. I ended up uh, working in Wisconsin, and I think by, like, that December, I had killed um, my first dope up in uh, up in Wisconsin. So, as ever since then, it's just kind of been off and running. Nice, nice. Um, all right. So, the next hunting story I want you to tell, and and you've mentioned it before on your podcast, and I get a kick out of it every time. I need you to tell me, tell everyone the story of your turkey hunt. And and basically the meaning behind the phrase "Hey Turkey." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so not this past turkey season. Um, the turkey season before, um, I had been turkey hunting before and unsuccessfully. So I was like, "All right, you know what?" Um, I was talking to my taxidermist, and um, he recommended it. Um, uh, outfielder out in Nebraska and I ended up going out there and shooting some stuff so it was kind of cool um in that right but I also got the turkey hunt and so there was a guy that was in the lodge and he was just like there's another guy that was hurting turkeys and he was like you know when before you get ready to shoot him and he was um hunting with a shotgun he was like you know if they're moving and you try to get them to stop just yell hey turkey it's a sound that they're not used to hearing and it's going to at least make them stop and look around. I was like, man, what? I was like, okay, what else? Hey, turkey. So, <laughs> first, you know, that first day, I, the first day I hunted was a morning. You know, saw some hens or whatever. It was pretty cool, you know, just seeing, you know, hens or whatnot. Because, like I said, my past turkey hunts, I hadn't seen, you know, too many turkeys. And you go to Nebraska, and it's just like they all over the place. Um, so the second, my evening hunt, I'm sitting there and I'm, you know, doing the call. Because mind you, I got zero confidence in calling. Like, I'm, I'm like, I don't even know if it works, you know. And the species that I was hunting with Miriams, and the guy was like, you know, you can, you know, call like every 15 minutes or so. Like, they, they're very vocal, so they respond to calls. All right, bet. So I'm calling, I'm calling. I got a mouth call. I got a little box call, whatever, mixing it up. Next thing I know, it's like four, I think it was four turkeys they come down and i hear them gobbling and whatnot and i'm so wrapped up because i'm looking at them in the mirror they like like blood red when they full like all in their head and around their neck and stuff so i'm looking at the colors like I, i'm on full-blown mesmerized and like i hit the call a little bit more every time i hit the call they gobbling, they gobbling back and forth so finally i'm like okay at some point i got to stop watching and shoot one of these things so then they was moving at a pretty good, you know, decent pace or whatever. So they was moving, and one was still in my zone, um, able to make, the, for me to make a bow shot. And I was like, hey, turkey. And he was like, Arr! and as soon as he started gobbling, that was when I let my arrow go, and it went right through him, like on the side, like the wing, and then came out below, like down by the foot. And he kind of like, walked around now the whole thing happened so fast i thought i missed them mm. and i thought they got away and it wasn't until i went back and looked at the footage i was like wait a minute 
that one went down. And sure enough, he kind of like stumbled off. The rest of them, they was gobbling, 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 went back up the hill. He kind of stumbled, took off and flew, and then piled up up under uh, a cedar tree. And that's where he was. And the other ones, they kind of stopped, and they picked out of him. It was just like, all right, I guess he ain't coming with us. And they went <laughs> on about their business. But, yeah, that's what it was. Hey, hey, Turkey. That was the craziest thing I've ever heard, and I should have tried. I didn't try it this season. I should have. I guess I didn't really process it or think about it or whatever. It was one of those things where it was in my it was fresh in my mind because the dude had said it. Um, but yeah, I plan to try it again because I believe that was just a fluke. I don't know if it's if that's really a thing or not. But and I want to try it on on some easterns or Osceola, you know, birds that are like super hard to hunt or whatever. So. Nice, nice. All right. So you mentioned you mentioned your son, and uh, you know, in, in regards to um, I guess your first hunt. Um, you have a son and daughter. Um, mm-hmm. and on Instagram, I recently saw some some great pics of you guys going fishing, and you even had them on as guests on your podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, what's it like? Um, you know, are they both into hunting? Are they receptive to you hunting? Like, what's the whole family dynamic there? So, like, my son, he enjoys it. He helps me out a lot. Um, I I don't let him shoot. Or I haven't let him shoot just because he won't practice enough for mm. my liking. All right. Um, but he'll go. Anytime that I go, he'll go. He'll go. He'll run the camera. You know, he'll help me look out and looking at animals and stuff like that. Like, you know, we, we took um, a road trip to Texas. Uh, when he was practicing, uh, we took a road trip to Texas to go hunt hogs, and he had a chance to shoot at one. And it's funny, because um, I've never told this story. I wrote it a couple of years ago, but I never told this story. So we went to Texas. Um, he had a chance to shoot at a hog, and we were in a um, kind of in a stand, in like one of those tripod stands, mm. and he had a shot. He had dropped back and everything. And I'm convinced. You can't tell me it would have been a perfect shot. But the bottom of his limb on the bow hit the um, hit the uh, edge of the uh, of the stand. So it didn't get like the full mm. like you know whatever. And so the the arrow dropped probably like a couple of inches like right in front of the hole. And like I said, he had been practicing, practicing. We had been practicing together. And stuff, and we went out there. And the crazy thing about all that was, like, I kind of felt some kind of way because I was just like, "Dang, it was right there," you know. God, was not some kind of way is they mad at him. It's just like, "Dang, we had the opportunity, we didn't capitalize on it." The only thing that boy kept telling me he was like, "I'm glad we went. You know, I got to shoot at some animals, and I got to see animals that I ain't used to seeing." Like he. You know, in Texas, so you saw, like, steers and stuff. They had, like, exotics. And so you seen, like, elk and, you know, like, rams and all kind of stuff like that. And he was just happy just, you know, being out there and seeing all the different um, the different animals and stuff. But mm-hmm. um, to get back to your question, like I said, he, so he'll go, he'll um, help me and stuff, like, on the property and whatnot. She'll come like, out and help with stuff and, like, play around in ATV. She wants no part of hunting. She <laughs> loves, you know, she's, you know, she's the type that's like, well, you know, what are the deer doing to you? They're not bothering you. And why? The turkeys, and it's so crazy because she's selective. It's like, the deer and the turkey, she don't want no part. Like, she wants me to leave alone. But, like, if we go, like, predator hunting, like, coyotes, or, like, if I start like I'm planning to start setting traps with raccoons just falling and stuff. She's all about that. Anything that hurt that hurts like the turkeys or the deer, go for them. Take them all out. But the other thing I will say about her is I've yet seen her turn down her plate when I start cooking. So <laughs> that's you know. No, but that... it, it, it it's cool. They both are in the media stuff when I can corral them. Um, she likes to take pictures. He likes to um, to run cameras. She likes to be in front of the camera. So she's done some read-ins and some uh, reads and some opens for me um, before. And then both of them enjoy being on the podcast. When I, uh, they're spending some time with their grandma. So when they come back, we'll probably get together and do like another yes. one. Yes. Um, please, please, please have them on a little bit longer because 
is the the most recent one with them on talking about fishing. They sounded a little bit shy, but then towards the end of it, they were kind of yeah. opening up, and I felt like it would have been something classic with the two of them <laughs> interacting. So if if you can get a full hour a full hour out of them, please do because I'd love to hear it. You know that okay. brother that that brother sister dynamic. Um, they were really cool. So shout out to them. Um, uh, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, so I mean, again, I'm I'm a huge fan of your work. Um, you know, what I'm saying everything that you're putting out there. Like I said, I love the diversity of your guests. You know, from um her humble hunt that was on there. Um, Ryan off the grid. Um, I believe you had on there. Um, Patrick Durkin, who you you had recently on stuff like that. So huge, huge fan. Now what I um what I wanted to do is I wanted to um pose a question from. One of the our viewers uh, and one of my followers on Instagram, really good guy. I'll shout him out at Bjorn Imperfect Human, um, and he wanted to, to pick your brain about, I guess, the cost of hunting, because you know a lot of people tend to tend to spend a lot of bread, a lot of dough on hunting. Um, does sometimes the cost outweigh the benefit of, of you know filling the freezer? He, I guess he was trying to, he wanted to pick your brain about, like, what, what's your thought about that? Right. I mean, it all depends on what you're in it for. Like, you know, I know people that, you know, like you say, they hunt, but they hunt because, you know, it's a lifestyle. It's, you know, in their, you know, DNA passed down from generation to generation. They hunt to offset cost of going to like the grocery store and stuff. They also farm. So, you know, they kind of got like the whole operation going. Does it offset the cost? If you, I would say, and this is just my opinion, cause I don't have like hard numbers or anything. Mm -hmm, um, no. Just for like the casual hunter, does it offset the cost? No, it costs more. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, like somebody like myself it's probably gonna yeah, like cost for somebody, more like, yeah. for somebody like me and you yeah it, it definitely costs more like i i go and get you know hamburger meat or you know chicken or whatever and a lot less than it takes for because when you factor in either a the price that you pay to go on an outfitted hunt or b the price that you pay for trying to set up your own space or your own land i mean yeah it does cost more but at the excuse me at the end of the day it just all depends on what you're in it for i enjoy working my land and trying to get my land straight to where it's like you know a, a, a sanctuary a paradise or whatever you want to call it for wildlife and i plan to live out there one day that's like one of my uh, top all right goals. um so for somebody like me, I enjoy hunting. I'm not going to starve if I don't kill a deer or if I don't kill a duck or a goose or whatever. Because I always joke, I was like, if I had to do this for real, it would, we would be dead. Cause <laughs> it, it, like, it, just, it don't work out that way. But, no, it's a, it, it's, I just enjoy doing it. It's fun. I try not to put a lot of pressure on myself. I mean, yeah, there's pressure because you want to try to get something. But like real pressure, nah. Like if my if my kids kids was looking for me just to go out, like we had to survive off of deer or ducks or whatever, uh, rabbits, whatever. Psh, man, please, we would all be right here malnourished. But and I ain't, it ain't that type of party right here. We we just enjoy doing it. So yeah, it it the cost wise, yes. I mean, just look at it, think about it. Even in the bow alone, like. If you go out and get the budgeted of the budgetest boats, mm. brand new, that's $350 right now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like yeah. 500 you know. So right then, now you talking about bow hunting. We ain't even talking about shotguns and all that stuff. And, and I, I ain't even trying to hear about, like, you know, going to the pawn shop and getting you know a uh, old bowl and getting it you know refurbished and all like that and i'm not knocking that but i'm talking about like if you just go and you just trying to get in the game mm -hmm. and like i said even if you just you go to your pro shop and they got like a used bowl or whatever i'm talking about like 
quote unquote entry level, not even the flagship, you know what they call flagship bowls, like top of the line, mm. whatever. Yeah. Basically, that's at least three hundred fifty dollars. That's for the bowl. That ain't even no sights, that ain't no arrows, I know. ain't no leaves. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like people be killing me, they just like, Well, it's all about filling the freezer. Well, okay. You know what I mean? I guess. You go to pick the wiggling and fill the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I'm so, I don't know. like I said, I, I don't particularly knock what anybody else doing, man. If you out there and you hunting and you enjoy it, in the end, it's all gonna help. It's gonna help all of us in the sport. So, agree, agree. All right. Um, now the second question, I didn't get a chance to jot it down, but it's from a mutual uh, social media follower. Um, Adam Edwards, who you had on the podcast as well, All yep. right. um, a.k.a. Uh, at Adam Keith underscore on Instagram. Um, and if and I'm sorry, Adam, if you're watching and, and I'm messing up the question, um, I guess um, I guess what prompted the move towards social media? Um, like, you know, you got interested in hunting and whatnot. What prompted the move to create the podcast, to create, you know, the website? you know, things like that to, to put your story out there? Like, what motivated you to do that? Honestly, um, I was a – I've always been a huge Swamp People fan ever since the okay. show came out. And I was late, again, I was late to the Duck Dynasty party. Um, huh. So when it was in its prime, I wasn't really watching it. I started watching it more and more on syndication. And the more I started watching it and watching how they move and – how they, like, created, like, a legacy, you know, like how Phil built, like, a company and, you know, passed it down to, you know, his sons and his family and, you know, like, they built, basically built the brand. And I was watching that one day and I had a Buck Commander shirt and I was just sitting around the house, you know, going through my T-shirts and stuff and I had a Buck Commander T-shirt and I was like, dang, it would be cool if I could have something of my own, like my own, like outdoor brand. Mm, okay. And that's why I say like, it took about a year for me to kind of like focus it on what it like. The name, the name came pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Um, but like to focus it on what I wanted to do and how could I make it stand out and stuff. Cause I knew, I mean, like, you know, I, I'm not a professional hunter. Like I have no aspirations at all of being like the next big TV hunter or whatever. Cause mm -hmm. a, I don't do it enough. B, uh, there's nowhere that I want to be for seven, 10 days, you know, and have <laughs> documented on video. Like that's just, and I kind of know how TV works. Mm -hmm. So like, it was just, that's not really appealing to me, but you know, when I started thinking it through, it's just like, okay, there are so many stories and so many people, that have stories that either haven't been told or they haven't told been told the way that I tell it. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, it, 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 that's I, the way you're, you're uh, I guess, verbalizing is exactly what I love about, you know, your podcast. It's exactly just that is, it's like I said, you, you have a way of making it seem like, you know, it's, it's you and a guest are just sitting down over beers or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And just, and just talking. Um, yeah. and, and it makes that person, your guest, comfortable enough to just start, like, spilling their guts. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. and, and it's, I got to tell you also, yours is, is and again, and I'm late to the game, but uh, your podcast is the very first podcast of any kind I've ever heard. You know what I'm saying? Now, now on a daily basis, I'm listening to so many different podcasts. You know what I'm saying? But yours was the very first. So yeah. you, you, you talk about being late to – well, Swamp People was one of your favorite shows, but you talk about being late to Duck Dynasty. I've yet to even see <laughs> Swamp People, Duck Dynasty, or anything like that. Oh, you know what I'm saying? It's, it, it's fun. Like, it, it's just – it's funny. You know, people get caught up um, in all the political BS and whatnot. But if you just, like, watch it – like, I – Again, being in media, I have the ability to look at stuff face value and just kind of mm -hmm. take it from there. And that show is hilarious to me. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah, it, it's – and now, like I said, I was just sitting around 
and I was watching it, and then my gears started spinning, and I was just kind of thinking. So, and it was like I want something, you know, with my name on it, um, and something that potentially, you know, could outlive me. Now, whether it's through like my kids or just like you know the level of success with my work, um, you know, of course, you know, you would love for your kids to do it and stuff. But I'm also I'm not one of them parents that try to force, you know, them into something. Like, you know, if you want to do it, you want to pursue it or whatever, that's cool. I'll support you, but I am, I'm not going to, like, shove it down your throat. Like, you got to do mm. this. Um, mm. You know, I, I'm very self-aware, and I'm very aware that, you know, what I'm trying to do may, you know, fade out after, you know, I get to the point where I can't do it no more. And I'm okay with that. And, as long as I can do it, um, and as long as I feel um, rewarded by doing it, mm-hmm. and, you know, the success, I get frustrated. I mean, I, honestly, I do. I get frustrated at times for, like, where I am as far as, like, you know, the success or the number of downloads or are people really, you know, listening to it? Is it really reaching people? You know, I get frustrated at times by that. But then when I talk to people like you and a few other people that have hit me up and like, I saw somebody just like in the, in the um, comments or whatever, people like joining and putting in comments. It was like, I listen to your podcast every time it comes out. I'm like, y'all the 12 people that keep showing up every week. Man, I appreciate y'all. <laughs> like, it's, it's like, yeah, every Monday, every Monday, man, it's, it's, it's like, rare. If, it's rare if I miss it. Cause I, I think I think early on too, me listening to your podcast, I used to start hitting you up Monday morning, like, "Yo, when you dropping the podcast?" Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And it's so, crazy because I try to be consistent, but shoot, life, man, that's the only thing. Like my daughter says to me sometimes, "Life, yeah, life, life happens." It, it just, life happens. Like, I try to have it done by Saturday night, and so it will be up early, um, just because of the the analytics and the way the analytics work, like how people listen. I try to get it in, you know, early enough so to have that full day cycle. And I used to stress out about it. Like, if I drop it at 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Monday, like, I'm legitimately mad because it's like I feel like, you know, I let listeners down. Now they're going to be like, well, they don't know where to get it, and blah, 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 mm-hmm. and all this other stuff. But, shh, life. Right, so I just I get it out there. And like I say, y'all love it. Y'all, you know, y'all let me know y'all love it. And, the, the episodes that y'all really like, I can look at the numbers and tell, and vice versa, the episodes, y'all just like, okay, he ain't talking about nothing this week. I can tell, too. So, I mean, but that's the, that's the nature of the beast, man. So, I, no, I, I genuinely appreciate it. Um, like you say, I'm my own worst critic. You know, I put something out. You know, I feel like, you know, I want it to flop and, and get there. I mean, you know, everybody came – can't be Joe Rogan, but we can try. <laughs> <laughs> That's another podcast I listen to every day, too. That dude cranks out content like is going out of style. Like, Yeah. And, and, yo. and, and what you have to understand, like, that's a whole nother level, man. Like, I would, I don't know personally, but just knowing what I know about the business, mm-hmm. I would, I mean, that dude has a staff. So it, it ain't just him. You know, nah, true, very true. Doing, very true. you know, doing whatever. I'm pretty sure he coming up with ideas or saying, "Hey, do this, do that," and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But man, yeah, people like Joe Rogan and like one of my favorite podcasts is um the Steve Austin show, the wrestler Stone Cold Steve Austin because he's he got big, his own show. Know, All right, yeah, he's a big deer hunter and stuff. Like now, ninety percent of his podcast. Is about you know he interviews like wrestlers or former wrestlers and stuff. Uh-huh. Talking about wrestling, but um, you know he's a big deer hunter from Texas or whatnot. And the thing that I love about his podcast is so free flowing. Like you can tell mm-hmm. he's just like, "F it, this is what I'm doing. This is what it is, and this is how y'all gonna take it." I'm gonna so, have to look. I'm gonna have to look into that one. I'm gonna yeah, into that yeah. One. All right. Oh. So to kind of to kind of wind this down, I want to ask on um, one final question. All right. So um, you're five years in the game in terms of hunting, um, and uh, your podcast has been out for what, like a year, two years now. <laughs> what is this? July seven yeah. months. Seven I'm months. Seven January. months. All right. Now, so seven brand, months. The brand has been going. Let's see. August of this year will make 
three years because it started in 16. All right. So, um, so August of this year will be three years for the brand, brand land total, and then the podcast, yeah, like seven months. All right. So my question is, what what is possibly one or maybe two pieces of advice that you'd offer to someone that is trying to create a brand kind of similar to yours or whether, you know, whether it's hunting related or not, but also trying to share their story, whether it's via social media, um, like YouTube or even uh, starting their own podcast. What is one or two pieces of advice you'd offer a person looking to start out like that? Patience. Mm. I swear if they sold it, I'd be in the store buying it every day because I don't have any. <laughs> and I, I can be honest about that. I mean, you you just have to be patient, um, kind of have a nose to the grindstone mentality. Um, and the hard thing about the patience is you go look around. You know, people always say, like, you know, um, comparisons rob you of joy and all kind of stuff like that. The reality is you kind of have to measure yourself as to what's going on and if you're not patient and kind of keep your nose to the grindstone it's easy to get frustrated quick because you're going you're going to feel good about the stuff that you're putting out mm -hmm. but then you're going to look around and somebody else going to put out something completely different or maybe not completely different but even put out something that's in the same genre mm -hmm. and they and they stuff going to pop and you're going to be looking at yourself like, well, what did I do wrong? Like, what what I didn't do? Like, I'm in a podcast group, and this is, like, all over, like, all kind of topics and everything. And I sit there, and I read those threads. People's like, oh, I got 1,000 downloads in my first day or my first week. And I'm just like, well, what the, what am I doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, patience. That's the big thing. Patience, have a nose to the grindstone mentality. And the other thing I would say, and I'm bad about this, and I try to do it. I'm even bad about it in my career, like in, in my career job. Sets many goals. It's easy to set the big goals. Okay. But, again, it's easy to get frustrated because your eyes on that big goal. You have to learn how to either set um, milestone, like stepping stone goals, and be mm -hmm. excited to celebrate those. Because if you don't, and if your sole focus is on that one big goal, mm -hmm. unless you built completely different in a way that I don't know about, you're going to get frustrated. And the frustration is what's going to rob you of the joy mm -hmm. and the fulfillment. So mm -hmm. that, those are really the biggest things, man. Like I said, just be patient because everybody's stuff don't pop overnight. Yeah. Um, if you're getting into it to make money, um, you better have a surefire, like, top-notch thing. Especially mm -hmm. in the outdoor industry, because mm -hmm. it is, I, it's not impossible, but it's hard, and it tries no. your patience. I, I can totally, I could totally feel you, feel you on all all counts, especially the whole patience and setting uh, mini goals. I know a lot of people, depending on who you are, everybody has a different um, approach to it. But I, I kind of agree with the setting mini goals because, like years ago in a past life, I used to be a personal trainer. And a lot of my clients used to be caught up with the whole, um, you know, they, they want to get to a certain goal weight and they get frustrated when they haven't dropped enough weight. But then I had to put in perspective for them and that, they, you know, watch, watch the smaller things, you know, watch how you may have dropped a pant size or two, you know, saying watch how yeah. you, you may get be getting thinner in the face and be like, when, when you're training, don't, don't look for, for, don't keep staring. I mean, while you should be paying attention to that ultimate goal, watch the baby steps, the, the right. progress that you may pay attention to, you know, take place in one foot in front of the other. So I totally agree with that. So, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, Mr. AB3. <laughs> I want to thank you. Dude, I want I want to thank you again. I know you said you weren't feeling well, so I appreciate you, you know, taking the time out to still come on tonight um, and for being accommodating because originally – um, I think I had a, I had originally slated for you to be the only guest tonight, um, but you you were hugely accommodating with that, and for me to be able to to knock out two interviews for the night. Yeah, so, no man, um, I'm, it's anytime you know that I can help or whatever. Like I said, I love what you're doing. I love your energy behind it. Um, you know, you're doing wonderful, wonderful things, and like I said, it's, you, it's been thank a joy just to see you, just kind of just 
go from this dude that's like asking me a couple questions in a few short months and now you just like blowing up all over the place man so nah, i ain't uh, blowing up i'm just trying to share my story did you get did, real quick before you go did you get your deer hunting and everything straight like do you know where dude, you're going no. I've got an idea. Um, all right, shout out to first uh, this this brother named Alex. Um, he goes by the Instagram handle at zero feet per second. So he's an he hunts literally right like where I was looking to originally hunt. Um, he hunts within that area. It's close by. He's very knowledgeable. He's a New York State certified guide. So okay. so he's a he's a dude I plan on leaning on. You know a lot. So you know if you're listening and watching this. Go ahead and follow at zero feet per second. You know, show him some love. Um, so he's somebody whose brain I've been picking. Um, but um, without further ado, go ahead and let people know, um, you know, where they can find you on social media, YouTube, website, podcast, all that. So uh, podcast is Bryant Land Country podcast. It drops every Monday. Um, I was doing bonus episodes. Um, mm -hmm. usually bonus episodes are just like random stuff that I want to pontificate about. So, but this summer, um, I've been just doing the main episodes. So Bryantland country podcast, um, at official Bryantland on Instagram, Bryantland on Facebook, uh, at three Bryantland on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter as much. Um, the biggest place where you could probably catch me is definitely on Instagram at official Bryantland. Uh, we got a Bryantland YouTube channel. Uh, we got a Bryant Land Vimo channel, um, and then of course everything is on the website BryantLandCountry.com. All right, man. Thank you again, man. I really appreciate it. Um, and yo, anytime if you're willing to come back on here, dude, I'd love to have you again. Um, maybe right before the deer hunting season, um, or even after it, or the middle of it, if you got time. You know what I'm saying? You say so, when, we'll figure it out. Copy that, brother. Yo, thank you, man. Have a good night. All right, you too.